Courtiers have been left furious after a Spanish TV show made up claims that the Princess of Wales was in a coma and in great danger following her recent abdominal surgery. So-called royal expert Concha Calleja sensationally revealed that doctors had had to act quick quickly in saving Kate's life and took drastic actions, including intubating her. But the extraordinary claims have been strongly rebuffed by Kensington Palace, with one official branding them total nonsense. The princess returned home at the start of this week con to continue her recovery after a two-week stay at the London Clinic Hospital. It's not the first time the foreign press have infuriated the palace. <laughs> Kate was the victim of a long-lens topless pool snaps during a holiday in France, and Prince Harry's top-secret Afghanistan deployment was exposed by international journalists. Well, frankly, I think this um, Spanish journalist should be stripped of her media accreditation, and I think <laughs> that the Fiesta, the Spanish channel, should be issuing a formal apology to Kate and her family. What are they going to invent next, that she's dead? I think this is really, really disgusting. It's clear that it was a pretty serious operation, whatever it was, that she had a long stay in hospital. Mm -hmm. She wasn't seen leaving the hospital. I think it's more serious than Kensington Palace have, have, um, have revealed. And that's absolutely, I think her privacy should be respected. Um, but I think this is despicable and really malicious piece of clickbait. Uh, obviously, the foreign press have different rules to, we, to, to what we yeah. have. But I think that they, you know, that this woman shouldn't be a journalist. Yeah, but then, then again, you know, as you quite rightly said, the palace tried to sort of lead us down the path. It's fairly sort of, uh, you know, normal, nothing to get worked up about. And they, then we, they, in that same statement, we all remember, I remember when it broke, we were on air going, oh, she's having a bit, little bit of surgery, nothing much. Hang on. She's going to be in hospital for two, two weeks, weeks to yeah. recover, and then we won't see her again until Easter. And this is no minor operation. And Kev, that's the point. This it's is no serious. minor operation. Yeah. My my point is, I'm sure this is absolute rubbish. But considering considering we haven't really been put in the picture by the palace, you can't. Or I wouldn't say you can't blame foreign journalists for speculating, but you might as well expect speculation. So in a way, uh, you know, uh, you know, who knows? I don't I think, think this I is think true, true, but we I, don't know. But that's it's my true. point: that it, it is clearly true. really serious, but it and, could and be because true. of that, you Make could. But maybe well, she's it's clearly not true because they wouldn't know if they had to resuscitate her by saying we need to give her a two-week yeah, stay. Yeah, but we don't they know, would, they, do would, we? they would say yeah. she needs to stay for two weeks depending on the seriousness of, of the surgery that she had. Look, I think Fiesta is a gossip channel. I read into it a bit and it's quite popular in Spain. It's, but it's very it's very gossipy. It's the kind of channel that you find in many Latin American countries where they 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 don't their journalistic standards are not particularly high because it's kind of it's basically very <laughs> chatty. Not it's like very us. They don't not chat. like in this country. <laughs> oh no. I mean, you know what it is? It's like it's like Grandma Abuela TV. You you know, it's like when you sit there and you're Esther, like, oh, stop, you're like, stop, right? Stop, stop, stop the impersonation. By, I, by the way, I watch the oh, shameless on YouTube. So there's one called Casa Cerrado, which I watch, which I love. Anyway, <laughs> but the point is, you have to understand the style of the station and the, the, the show to get why something like this would come from it. This wouldn't come from, like, the PBC's equivalent in Spain. Mm. I think I, I, I think Kevin's got a very, BB, very good point. on the BBC. <laughs> and and the, you know, the royal quarters and the palaces always know that if you leave a vacuum yeah. mm. and you don't say what's going on, then a whole load of nonsense comes in and, and fills that vacuum. I mean, that's exactly what's happened here. On the other hand, of course, <clears> it's <throat> we all understand this was something quite serious. And, you know, when any of us go through some sort of health concern, you know, whatever it might be, or even, even something happy like being pregnant, you often want to keep it private Privately, until you're yeah. sure it's OK. And that's a really natural human instinct that, you know, until you're over the worst, until you're back on your feet, until the baby's, you know, cooked or whatever it is, you just want to keep those things quiet. And it's really difficult for so, the royals to do that. So you think in six months' time, Kate Middleton, sorry, Princess Kate, is going to come out and say what what the surgery yes, is about? Yes, I do. I do. That's oh, that's really? exactly what I think. I think when she and you know William and everyone else know that she's through it and and it's all a happy happy ending, mm -hmm. I think that is when she almost, to my mind, I'm certain she will then say, "This is what I happened. I will now be an advocate for whatever you yeah. know, charity." So what if she blah says, blah blah. Oh, uh, they, uh, they had to uh, put me into an induced coma. Then we're uh, all going to look a bit stupid. Then we're all going to yeah. look a bit dumb. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, this does sound to me to be a, a bit beyond the pale, but we don't actually know what the truth is because we haven't been told the truth the is, and I understand that. 
you know, it's a private medical matter. No, but it's a really difficult to... tightrope for the Palestinians. It is. Walk, yeah. And you've found the uh, problems that yeah. can emerge well, with this kind of yeah. Well, we do have some happier royal news. Um, apparently, the King has reportedly, King Charles has reportedly indicated he <clears> would <throat> give his blessing. Should the Duke, I don't know if this is happy or a bit weird, but should the Duke and Duchess of York want to remarry? Mm. Although Andrew no longer needs the King's permission, he only needs, you only need permission to marry if you're the first six in line to the throne. But the King's endorsement is apparently important to him. The wedding would likely take place in the small royal chapel of All Saints near Andrew and Sarah's home at Royal Lodge. It would be a far cry from their lavish uh, 1986 royal wedding, of course, at Westminster Abbey, which was viewed by 500 million people worldwide. Yeah. Oh. But sadly, their divorce was finalised 10 years later. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be something, wouldn't it? Them remarrying. I've been saying for a long time that I could really see yeah. this happen. They will, won't they? I think, they were, I think, I think initially... It was no way it could ever happen while Philip was alive. He was he was the fly in the ointment as far as the rehabilitation of Fergie. You know, he was the one that Eat really there, didn't he? really Eat. couldn't stand her and wouldn't have her at Sandringham, wouldn't have her at family occasions. <laughs> when he it was no well. coincidence that when he died, you know, when the Queen was still alive, she was started to you know, it there there was a thaw mm. that happened, I you know, and she started to be seen at more family events. And since <coughs> the Queen's died, Definitely, you know, now we've seen her then. So I, I wouldn't be at all... Do they I mean, need they to? Do they, they need together? to remarry? I mean, older people who have divorced and then come to that kind of living together arrangement, they don't need to remarry. Well, there might be some quite healthy financial reasons. Might yeah, be good for Andrew. Why would Fer people like Fergie again? Why would you want to marry someone who's mate to the paedophile? Because <laughs> she, she, she loves him. Fer Fer <laughs> Fergie and Andrew, Lodge. They, they proved that maxim that in this world you there's always terrible. someone for someone and those two <laughs> are made for each other. Fergie can do better. Me. Although, oh, that's way, by the way, be best, best wishes to Fergie with her cancer. <laughs> Absolutely. Be but Fergie, you can do much better than him.